you are now tuned in to The Money Zone with your host, Falasha Day, the accountant for entrepreneurs. The time is now, your future waits, the money matters, make no mistake, it's not too late to dominate, so don't delay, get your money straight. The money, money, the money zone, together we'll achieve your goals, we're building wealth, you're not alone, so don't delay, get your money straight. Hey guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's your girl, Falasha Day, the accountability accountant, guys. I want to say thank you so much for coming back on another episode on this amazing Tuesday on Rip Radio Network, guys. We are what? Like what? Have like two more episodes of the 2020 year. And before we can close out, I want you guys to start 2021 off with a bang. So before that, we have like I think we have one more guest, but it's going to basically be me for the rest of the year setting you guys up so you can be successful for 2021. So today's topic is tax tips for entrepreneurs. I know right now, many of you that watch this show and that is online right now, either you are an entrepreneur or you are an aspiring entrepreneur. So this video is for you. Tonight's show is for you. So here's why. Every business owner need to make sure that they save money in taxes. So do me one favor, guys. Please like the video, share it with your girlfriends, share it in any group. Let them know. Falasha Day about to drop some gems about tax tips, and especially their business owners, um, they want to definitely tune in. So, guys, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back.
Hey guys, welcome back. So I'm excited because um, you know, anything taxes, guys, I get so pumped up. Okay. So today it's what? December 8th. You have about 20 something, 22 days or so, what, 29 days to prepare for 2021, right? So from a tax perspective, since tonight's show is tax tips for entrepreneurs, the first thing I need you guys to do is just first grab your pen and grab your paper and also share the video because I'm going to debunk a lot of stuff. I'm going to give you guys some tips and stuff, but we're going to have a real conversation about you guys implementing tax tips as a business owner or online entrepreneur. So first things first, right now, Yes, you can try to contribute to your Roth. Yes, you can try to do as much as you possibly can at the end of the year, contribute to charitable con uh, charitable organizations and everything else. But the way to really leverage the tax system and to pay as little taxes as possible, it starts by you implementing tax strategies at the beginning of the year. OK, so when January one come, you guys need to start to prepare for next year's tax filing. OK, so it just is. So most people think, OK, I'm just going to um, avoid doing anything and I'm just going to save on taxes. It doesn't work like that. It don't work like that to save on taxes. You got to start at the beginning of the year. Here's why. So let's say, for example, you are a Uber driver. Okay, let's be honest. Uber do not calculate all of your mileage. You need to have your own mileage log to calculate your, your mileage for Uber or Lyft or DoorDash, right? Because you're missing uh, mileage if you don't, okay? So now, if you work for DoorDash and Uber on January 1 this year, but you don't start to track your mileage until June, what does that leave you with? That means you lost some mileage. That means you left money on the table. That means, okay, because the mileage rate for the 2021 filing season is 57.5 cents, something like that, right? So that means you left about 58 cents on average on the table because per mile, okay, let me clarify, per mile that you didn't track because you didn't start at the beginning of the year by tracking your mileage. That's just one simple one. So let's say now, okay, outside of the mileage, now we say, okay, you're going to be able to take another deduction, maybe say the business use of home deduction, but you don't keep proper records for your personal finances. You don't keep things in order, right? So guess what? When it comes time for you to provide me with your total utilities paid, you're unable to give me that. So what happens, guys? You end up leaving money on the table. So the first trick to maximizing your tax deductions, the first trick to paying as little bit of taxes as possible is that every expense that you guys incur in your business, you need to have it tracked. Point blank, period. You need to have it tracked. Okay? So first off, many of you are leaving money on the table because you're not doing the key part of running a business, which is doing your bookkeeping. According to the school of war and you guys, accounting is the language of business. OK, so that means when you talk business, you're speaking accounting, right? So when you go and say, I want to negotiate on the terms of my contract, that's accounting. I want to reduce the cost for this product that you're buying. That's accounting, right? So to be able to minimize your taxes and pay only $750 or look, pay as little bit of taxes as you possibly can, right? You have to first track everything. So write that down. Track everything. All your mileage, all your ex all your expenses, your Facebook ads, your coaching fees, everything. Okay. Tip number one: track everything. 
Tip number two. Okay? You guys definitely, okay, need to, you're going to be mad at me when I say this, sit with a tax professional and do some planning for at least one time of the year, at least one time for like every five year increment. So for example, right now, you're supposed to be figuring out how we can reduce your taxes for 2021, right? So what you would do is you schedule a, consult, a consultation with your accountant, preferably me, right? And we sit back and we strategize. Okay, well, if you do X, Y, Z, that's what I did with my client today. So we realized my client today had 107,000 in net operating losses that we're going to carry forward. Okay. So that's going to reduce his 468. Hold on one second, guys. Hold on one second. That's going to reduce the Okay, guys, sorry about that. I had to take a quick little break um, really quick. But this, the second thing, you guys, so number one was you get you have to track everything, okay? Number two, you want to sit down with a tax professional and let them look at your lifestyle. Let them look at your business. Let them see and tell you what tax deductions you may qualify that you can take, what tax credits you may qualify that you could take what type of new initiatives or grants or, or general business credits that you may be able to take on the state level, what business credits and stuff and deductions that you guys can take as well. So that initial tax plan with the professional at least once every five years will do your family and your business some justice because throughout that time, you would know whether or not contributing to a charity will benefit you. You would know whether or not you can take the business use of home deduction. You would know whether or not you're able to use the net operating loss deductions and stuff that we're talking about with our clients right now. You would know exactly those things. So my tip number two, guys, you want to go and sit with a tax professional, preferably someone with some credentials that know how to tax plan um, to be able to save um, you some money and prepare like a plan, a tax plan, so you can leverage and minimize your tax burden. So the third thing that you guys wanna definitely do and think about this is that when you're trying to implement tax saving strategies, right? You're gonna have to make some investments into some type of tools or some resources or some softwares or some programs or something to help you be able to track that investment, right? So for example, the mileage. If you don't have QuickBooks online, okay, you may have to pay for um, your mileage software. So you may have to pay for like Mile IQ or something. That's a $5 investment per month. So you would end up paying, what, $60 a year, right? So you can be able to deduct 5,000 on your business taxes. In addition to that, with the mileage deduction, you'll be able to deduct the $60 for the software, okay? So number three, you have to be willing to make some investments into some tools and softwares to be able to help you implement your tax strategies. So for example, one of my clients today sent me his whole job description. He's hiring his child, y'all, but he took my program. He took my course, so he was able to deduct the 197 that he paid for the course, I think it was $97. He paid $197 or 97 
that he paid for the course. And then now, because he know the tax strategy, how to hire his children, he's hiring two of his children. So he's about to now save $24,000, okay? Almost in taxes just because he took my course. So you guys have to be willing to invest when you pay for your tax planner or when you pay me to do a tax consult, consult with me or tax plan, you get to write that off as well, okay? So you have to take into consideration that to be able to really minimize your tax burden, you may have to make the necessary investments, okay? And this one, guys, I'm gonna ask you to share the video Share this on Instagram, Facebook, wherever you guys are. Invite some people because I want to drop a lot of gems for you guys on this one. This one number is number four. You ready? You're going to have to have some money to play the game. I'm going to repeat that. You're going to have to play this tax game. The tax game is played with your own money. People say, okay, I don't want to pay no taxes. Are you willing to zero out all of your income? Uh, many of you are learning from a lot of people online where they're telling you they have LLC, 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 all of this, right? They have all that going on, which might be true now, but they're strategically doing that to take the income from 100000 all the way down to zero. But they're playing a money game. They're playing the game. They're moving money from them as the business to different to other businesses, to employees, to family, um, to investments, to machinery. And so they're playing the tax game. So to really be able to not pay any taxes, the truth is you got to invest all the money you make. All of it. So for example, you make $100,000. If you don't want to pay any taxes, you need to get that $100,000 all the way down to $12,000. Okay? Do you hear me? If you want to don't pay any tax on your $100,000, take it from $100,000 and make every investment that you know of that you need for your business to flourish, okay? And get it all the way down to the bare minimum or 18,000, depending on your standard deduction or depending on your itemized deduction. So if you qualify, and if you don't know what a standard deduction is or itemized deduction, guys, you want to look out on my Instagram because me and my team are putting out content this week that kind of explains the differences. So I put some together for I put some stuff together for you guys so you'll be able to see what the difference is between standard deduction and itemized deduction. But if your income is 18000 and your itemized deductions is 18000 because you're head of household, then you won't pay any taxes, okay? All right. So the trick is you got to get that 100000 all the way down to the standard deduction or the itemized deduction, right? So you won't pay any taxes. But how do you do that? And what is the strategy behind you doing that? The issue is you have to find investments. You have to put the money back into the business, put the money back into your knowledge, put the money back into assets that the business own or into assets that you can use and the business own. So when you guys are really saying you want to pay no taxes, are you willing, okay, to zero it all out? Are you willing to play the money game? Are you willing to make some investments into some, into some businesses and into some people that may not bring a return right now, right? But what will happen is if that business operated on a loss and you did it right, then you might get a K-1 with the loss for that business. So that then reduce your income because you gave them 20000 So every year you got losses of 10000 15000 because they invested to get the business going. So the trick to the tax code, guys, is that you, as, as entrepreneurs, this is key for you. You have to find ways to invest back into yourself, okay? But see, that may not work for you. This is why tax planning and working with the professional one-on-one, -on -one, guys, is really required because who can really take all of their income and get it completely down to zero if they're not wealthy? Let me repeat that. Who can really take their income from 1 million all the way down to 12 million if they're not wealthy. Meaning, what money will you survive off? 
What money would you be able to pay your mortgage or your rent with? Or are you going to own everything you live in and then come up with another strategy? I'm not even going to tell you guys the tax strategy I was about to say, because that's, that, that's for the paid customers. I was about to tell y'all everything. I was about to drop the ball. Uh, but yeah, or you, you, you rent the home from the business or something like that. You can do that, but you have to have the courage and the expertise and the knowledge to be able to pull it off. So I think this is what, number five? Number four? No, number five, you have to play the tax game. And to play the tax game, you have to spend some money. And the issue is this, you have to know how to spin it, when to spin it, and when you need to tap out. Because I did a, a consultation, not even a consultation, a one-on-one -on -one with one of my bookkeeping clients. And their goal is to not owe anything on the business income, okay? Because they're used to getting refunds. And last year was the first year that they really owed or whatever. And their goal is to not really have to pay uh, any um, taxes on the income from the business. So we just had our meeting last week and I was explaining to her that we have to really first start off by knowing how much taxes you may, uh, may owe, how much in taxes will you owe if you um, leave on the books XYZ income. So if my client was to leave as a net income 50,000, what will her what will she owe in taxes? What would you owe in taxes? So we have to make those estimates and analysis. Okay, if we leave $100,000 on the books, what is the taxes associated this? Associated with it. The issue is this. You don't want to ever spend beyond the tax savings. Let me repeat that again. You never want to spend beyond the tax savings. So what do I mean by that? Let me just do a brief calculation for you guys. So on, of, let's say $100,000 worth of income, right? I'm going to calculate the self-employment taxes only. I'm not going to take into federal taxes or anything like that, right? So I'm going to take into consideration just your self-employment taxes. So on $100,000, right, you guys are going to pay $14,100. I'm going to just round it to the nearest dollar. $14,130 in self-employment taxes. So our goal, right, is for us, for you to not have to pay the $14,000 in taxes. Now, the issue is how much money do you guys have to spend, right, in your business to be able to reduce that $100,000 all the way down to where you're not paying much taxes? So the investment may look like maybe $50,000. Let's say if you invest $50,000, what would your taxes be left over after that, right? Okay, so if we leave fifty thousand income. You gonna have seven thousand in taxes. So are you satisfied with finding ways to invest back into your business for with that fifty thousand dollars? Are you confident enough in your capabilities to take fifty thousand, invest it, and make more money and reduce? your income down to 50,000 so you can only pay 7,000 in taxes or is it even worse and see this is where it gets tricky this is why i like to come on here and be completely honest with you guys because people will school you guys and think they're doing something but not even understanding that there's an underlying decision that you guys gotta make are you willing to spend fifty thousand dollars or make investments into assets that can reduce or defer your income Okay, by fifty thousand dollars. Okay, or are you willing to just pay the seven thousand more in taxes? That's where the problem come into place, and this is why you guys have to work with your own accountant after you take all of my advice today and track your expenses. Invest in some softwares to um, help you track. Um, your different additional expenses and stuff, and get your stuff in order. You now have to figure out what game are you going to play. Are you going to invest heavily into your business, which many of you guys are doing, but you guys are doing it in a way where you're not able to leverage and really grow. 
okay? So that was number five. Number six. Number six tax tip for entrepreneurs, guys. Okay, so if you're an entrepreneur, I had to see if I saw anything up in them. This computer is be guys, okay? So if you're an entrepreneur, another tip you have to understand is they are is your business structured the way it needs to be structured. I see everybody post on Instagram and Facebook and stuff talking about register your business as an LLC, register your business as an S Corp, register your business as a corporation, register your business as this. But nobody is really giving you guys the real juice behind all of it. You have to, excuse me, guys, not go by those posts, but go by what works for your, your business, where you guys are, where you're going to be in the next couple of years, and the affordability right now. Some of you are investing into your businesses. You may not be making as much money as everybody else. So you may not be making, or everybody else may not be making a, a, as much money, whatever the situation may be, right? With your financial state. You just need to now say, okay, what works best for me? So rule number one, an LLC is either an S Corp or partnership or sole proprietor, okay? So you see all of those posts say become an LLC, become an S Corp. Okay, first of all, you have to either be an LLC or a corporation. You have to have some type of status, some type of entity status before you can convert to an S Corp, okay? You cannot be a sole proprietor, DBA, right? And try to be an S Corp. You cannot do that. You can be an LLC, okay, and be taxed as a corporation. But it doesn't make you a corporation. Okay? You could be a corporation and you could be taxed as an S Corp. You see? So this is where you have to now ask yourself what works best for my business? And where I am. So, for example, for all of the people that have been seeing the post about S Corp, S Corp, S Corp, you may not be ready for an S Corp. Let me not bust your bubble. That is not the only tax strategy. I'm so upset that so many people are using the S Corp way to lure you in. That is a basic tax strategy that may or may not work for everybody, depending on how much money your business makes. You have to know where your business stands. So, for example, if you are operating as an S Corp, right, there is so much more involved. You have to do payroll, okay? You have to set up accountable plans to be able to deduct certain expenses such as your business use of home and stuff, okay? You have to pay for two tax returns to be prepared. You have to do your bookkeeping and stuff. But everybody tell you guys to go get an S Corp, but they don't tell you that the cost is it's going to increase to manage your accounting and your businessmen and to manage your business. The cost is going to increase. They're not telling you that. They're just telling you, oh, go get the S Corp, go get an LLC. Everybody not ready to be an S Corp. I don't recommend my clients to become an S Corp until they net at least. $60,000 in revenue. So if you are a sole proprietor right now, meaning you're a single member LLC, it's only you, right? And you're not netting at least $60,000, I don't recommend an S corporation for you. I'm not going to sit there and come on here and say, everybody can be an S corp. You're going to take advantage of this tax benefit. No, everybody's not going to benefit from, benefit from an S corp. I only convert my clients when they get to that peak of 60,000 or I know that they're going to hit it by the end of the year. So I start to apply for them to be an S Corp. So yes, converting your business to an S Corp is a tax strategy, but you, my recommendation is for you to be netting, meaning after your expenses, I mean, after your income and after all of you deduct all of your expenses, you're keeping 60,000 or more. 
If you're not keeping 60000 or more, then an the escort may not benefit you. The cost is going to knock you in the head. You barely making five figures. And then you telling me to manage your escort is going to cost you $8,000 a year and you're only making 40000 That's not smart, okay? But yes, it's, uh, converting over to an escort will work. For some people, but my recommendation is for you guys to net at least sixty thousand dollars. All right, at least sixty thousand dollars. Don't fall for the bait. Get all excited. Drop working with your accountant because you saw that post on Instagram. I see y'all. I be seeing y'all. Or you, you be, or you already know you work with somebody. And you saw that little post. It's all, it's all advertisement, guys. When we really sit down with you, or we really have to take into account everything. We cannot just say, "Oh, you get an escort. You get an escort." No, you have to be doing some things and making some moves and bringing in some money to be able to take um, to um, cover the cost of managing that escort. Okay. So, guys, we're going to take a quick little break, okay? Um, so, hopefully, you guys have been enjoying today's um, topic, tax tips for entrepreneurs. I told you guys I was going to be spilling the beans, and you probably thought that I was just going to just list out expenses. Yeah, we did, and deductions and stuff we did, but we're going to talk about really how you play the tax game today. So, guys, if you're enjoying it, please share the video with your friends, your colleagues and stuff. Um, start a watch party or whatever. Um, but if you want to watch any of the replays, go to ripradionetwork.com. And then you can also check out the videos um, on all of the podcasting platforms like Amazon, iTunes, uh, everywhere. Um, you can check out the show there as well. And don't forget, guys, to join our mailing list by going to bit.ly. TM get notified TMZ that look I didn't make sure that get notified TMZ all caps um to join our mailing list so you can know about our upcoming guest and what we have in store or what resources we may have um for you guys so I'm gonna take a quick little break and we'll be right back many entrepreneurs fail is because of their self avoidance self that lack of self accountability and really yeah. focusing on yourself so so many of the times we're afraid to leverage relationships because we also didn't know we didn't do all the work that we needed to do so take advantage of what raven just said if you have friends that are in high places leverage those relationships but make sure you do it strategically and and make sure there's some some strategy um, behind it, many of you are starting businesses because it looked like it, you know, everybody else is doing it. It looked cool, it looked this, and it's not around your purpose and your passion. Hello. You know, Hello. so what many of you are doing is you're taking those shortcuts in those businesses that you guys presently have because you never initially started up on the right foot. Because that's one of the things when I ask new startups, they're not clear. They cannot tell me the age, the demographics, the income, the, the avatar of their clients. So from your perspective, how important is identifying your target market and getting that business off the ground? That the millennials want the success right now, right away. They, they're, they, mm -hmm. they don't have the courage to continue past year one if they had a year of failures. So right yep. now, if you are that millennial, and you quit on every idea that you started or every new business yep. stop and put in some work for at least a year or two um, in something yep. consistently and then judge your your six your success off of that you cannot judge your success because you didn't got a shopify um page and Eight. you put it up there and you put the link in your instagram and nobody bought for over six months like you cannot say you did your job by just doing those few basic steps you have to do the leg work. So books like um, Raven's workbook, The Game Changer, is that that part of the leg work that many I see from my experience, many millennials try to avoid. Yes, you yeah. may not need the old school business plan, but you need some type of plan. Success.
2020 is the year that everything impacts your bottom line. And as an accountability accountant, I've seen it. I've seen when cl clients are not number one transparent and honesty and honest how it impacts their bottom line. I've seen when clients aren't operating in their greatness and accepting responsibility, how it impacts their bottom line. Take accountability for your actions. You can take all the credit in the world for the things that you do right, as long as you also take responsibility for the things you do wrong. It must be a balanced equation. You don't get it one way and not the other. You get to take credit when you also take accountability. Hey guys, so welcome back. I had to take a quick little break. You know, sometimes I get a little tongue-tied. <laughs> uh, but though I'm excited, guys. So if you're just tuning in, we were talking about tax tips for entrepreneurs. And I gave you guys about five different tips that you guys need to incorporate. And the first few was the fact that you cannot wait until the end of the year, guys, to implement anything. To really maximize your taxes, you need to start as soon as possible. Start the moment you find out about the tax deduction or the credit or whatever. Start keeping the records at that point. And I gave you guys an illustration of you tracking your mileage. If you wait until the last minute, you're leaving money on the table. Okay. So outside of that, that's the main, main, main thing. That's where the habit comes. Like, honestly, most of my clients that really allow me to minimize their taxes as much as possible, they're actually really organized, y'all. They'll be like, Oh, I have, they'll have a cover sheet and the cover sheet will be like, um, this, I invested 6,000 to my IRA. I've done this. I gave 300 for my, um, children's 529. I've done this. I've done that. Like they're very, 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 very organized. So that's one of the tricks to get all your little stuff, um, in order. Um, so number six, guys, is that you also need to know whether or not you're going to be taking the itemized deductions or you're going to be taking the standard deduction. So the standard deduction is what all of us get, okay? And I should have had the screen and all of that stuff because my team just created my stuff too. But um, you'll see them on my Instagram next week. So um, your item, your standard deduction is what all of us get. Everybody, everybody in the whole wild world, depending on your filing status, depending on if you're single, married, filing head of household, or married filing jointly, or married filing separately, whatever the case may be, widower, whatever, right? Depending on your filing status is determines the amount of your standard deduction. So that standard deduction is some magical number, right, that they increase every year due to inflation that reduces your income. OK, so let's say that you are head of household. So your deduction is like 18,000. Let's just use 18,000 just so it could be easier. That's not the actual amount but let's just use 18,000 so you guys can understand what a standard deduction is right so let's say you make 50,000 Bob make 50,000 and Joe make 50,000 right and all of you guys have one child and you all foul hit of household guess what you all will qualify for the same standard deduction which I'm assuming in this example is 18,000 so the IRS say okay hey y'all Y'all made 50,000. Now subtract your income, right? Subtract the $18,000 from your 50,000 in income. So you take 50,000 minus 18, and that gives you 32,000. So that 32,000 is what we call your taxable income. So that is the money the IRS is going to say that you owe taxes on. So you're not going to owe taxes on the 50000 anymore because of standard deduction. You're only going to owe taxes on the 32000 Hopefully you guys got that, right? Okay. Everybody gets it. You don't have to own a home. You don't have to have a, uh, you don't have to um, be pregnant. Everybody gets the standard deduction, but depending on your situation, depends on the amount, right? Okay. Now, Itemized deductions. Everybody doesn't get that. Your itemized deductions is reflective on your lifestyle. So if you have a mortgage, 
right? You and your family own a home and you have a mortgage, then your mortgage entrance is an itemized deduction. If you guys pay property taxes, your property taxes is an itemized deduction, okay? If you guys have a vehicle and you register your vehicle this year and you pay registration fees, you can deduct the registration fees. If you have medical expenses in access of, I think it's a 7.5%, right? In access of the, of the threshold, you can deduct your medical expenses, right? And so on and so on. So those are your itemized, oh, and your charitable donations, right? Those are all your itemized deductions. So let's say all of that stuff equals $40,000. You contributed $20,000 cash to your charity. Your mortgage was $10,000 and your taxes, your state taxes was $10,000. That's $40,000, okay? Because I'm not going to make it complicated for you guys, which I never do. I'm not going to come into consideration of the thresholds and the income limitations. But because of the CARES Act, you can now deduct 100% of your college contributions regardless of your AGI. Okay? So we're going to say you're able to deduct the whole 40000 Because of coronavirus, you actually can now. So now you take your 50000 and subtract your 40,000 and itemize, which is your mortgage interest, your property taxes, and all of that stuff, right? Leaves you with $10,000 of taxable income. So the IRS will say, hey, Felicia, you owe taxes now on $10,000. So that is the difference between the itemized deductions and the standard deduction. The standard deduction is given to everybody. The itemized deductions is predicated on your lifestyle and what you spend for certain deductions and credits, okay? So now, for tax purposes, right, as an entrepreneur, as an individual, you all need to know which one you qualify for. You need to know whether or not you qualify for itemized deductions so you can know whether or not increasing them will help you reduce your taxes. You need to know whether or not you don't qualify for itemized deductions so you won't overdo something and don't get the deduction for it. Does that make sense? So a lot of you are making investments into areas that don't benefit you because you don't know whether or not you're able to take the standard deduction or the itemized deductions. But due to the CARES Act, guys, every person... If you contributed up to $300 in cash to a 501c tax exempt organization, we're all able to deduct the $300. Okay? So let's say, for example, you don't itemize. Okay? Due to the new CARES Act, because of coronavirus, everybody is still able to take at least a $300 deduction. So they gave you guys that. They said, okay. And they gave you guys a $300 donation, well, deductible donation, right? Because they want you guys to actually um, donate to charities, okay? So that's the thing. They want us to give cash to Charity. So they incentivizing us for taxes to say, okay, well, if you give $300 to a charitable organization, we encourage you to do that because now you won't miss out on the deduction because we're allowing you to take it. So that was one benefit. And so what they did was they added a line on the tax return, line 10B, on your tax return, I'm about to share my, share my screen really quick, uh, if I can find it really quick before we go. When I'm looking for stuff, I'm looking for the 2020 draft. There we go, got it. Um, so I'm about to share my screen, I'm about to show you guys. So um, for all of you, because I have a, a lot of clients that never gets to deduct their charitable donations because it never exceeds the amount of the standard deduction. However, due to coronavirus, the CARES Act, they are allowing everybody 
that have contributed to a charitable organization to be able to deduct it. And that's on that's strictly cash, guys. Cash, not your goodwill, not your old clothes, not your um your old furniture, strictly cash. Okay, strictly cash. So if you guys look at my screen where it says 10B right here, charitable contributions if you take the standard deduction. So remember, guys, we just learned that the standard deduction is given to everybody. But the itemized deduction is like a special little click that you have to spend some money to get in, right? So instead of having to get into the special click just to be able to deduct your charitable donation to the Red Cross that you gave, the IRS said, you know what, we're going to throw that in. Everybody can now take the charitable contributions deduction up to $300 on their tax return okay so guys if you normally contribute to your charity you don't ever get to take anything this is your year so you at least get the 300 dollars, right they they give you guys um something all right so we before we close out guys i have five tax tips that i'm just going to run down really quick that everybody should implement okay and guys if you're not following me on all social media platforms head on over to philosophy day the account on Instagram, Philosophy the accountability account on Facebook, and Philosophy the account on everything. So Leo submitted for us to get everything changed changed to the accountability account. So soon I'll be able to say again, go and follow me on all things social media. So get you so grab your pen and paper. So how many tips is this? One, two, three. Yep, it's five. So five tips that every business owner should incorporate. Every entrepreneur, each and every last one of you, okay? It may not be right now. It might be one year from now. It might be two years from now. But wherever you are in the phase of your business, my advice is for you guys to take at least these five tax tips throughout the lifetime of your business. And if you do that, you will then in turn indirectly build generational wealth with a few of the strategies that I have listed here on this paper, okay? So tip number one, you guys want to hire your child. So this is one of the key things that will keep money in your household and allow you to build generational wealth. OK, hire your children. Number two, invest in depreciable assets. So invest into buildings, machines um, and stuff that your business can use. But it's considered an asset. Even some vehicles um, like heavy duty trucks and stuff would be considered um, an asset. So invest into depreciable assets so you can be able to def defer the amount of your depreciation as the income, I mean, reduce your income from there. You all want to make sure you have some type of investment account. Um, you know, everybody had, it just depends on your mindset. So some people like 401k, some people like Roths. It just really depends on what your goal is when you retire, right? But the trick is please, please, please make sure you do Make sure you do set up some type of investment account. So if you have children, set up a 529, set up a Coverdale, okay? Set up a Coverdale, a 529 plan, um, and then you can even do your traditional Roth or 401k. Set up some type of retirement account, all right? Number three, invest into real estate. So if you make under 100000 flat, right, you get to take $25,000 right off the bat as uh, losses for your real estate. The moment that you go over 100,000, it starts to get reduced, right? But you still are able to take a portion. So the goal with the real estate is one, you have assets that are building losses in the back end that will in turn be deductible at some point in time. All right. So you want to go invest into the real estate so you can minimize your taxes um, as well. And then last but not least, convert your business to a ink. Um, convert your business to a ink that means corporation um, when you are really at that peak of growth you know when you're at that peak of growth growth so your business can be separate from you 100% is a totally separate entity from you and then at that point you are an employee you get certain benefits health insurance this this, and that and everything else guys I can keep going and going and going but a lot of people don't tell you guys the benefit of a corporation okay when you are on certain levels S Corp don't work partnership don't work support sole proprietor don't work it's the corporation game that you plan with subsidiaries and everything else guys um so that's basically it all that I have 
um, for you guys. I hope that um, all of you have taken a lot of notes and really thought about what I say because the tax game is really a mindset game and you have to be very certain in your decisions because and really in, investigate too. Because remember, the goal is just to reduce the tax part of it. You don't want to break the bank. You understand? So you have to have that autonomy and that strategy in place so you know, okay, well, I'm investing into this building to get what? To get this. And that's what me and my client talked about today. I was telling him, don't go and spend 300000 cash money on a building. Go get a loan on the building. Pay the PPP down for one fifty. You still have one hundred and fifty thousand to invest into another property and go from there. But without guidance, right? He would have just paid off the PPP, bought another property, and would have been out of his pocket four hundred thousand. And I still don't maximize all the taxes because I can't deduct the loan repayment. You see, so he didn't benefit that much from taxes. So guys, this tax game, you have to work with your tax professional and you cannot make decisions about your business off means and posts. Yes, you get the posts, you screenshot them, you put them in your swap file, you tell your accountant, hey, I want to implement this. You understand? I want to do this. And then they'll help you execute. You know, I'll help you execute. OK, so that's all I got for you guys. Don't forget to join our mailing list, mailing list by going to bit.ly forward slash TMZ. Get notified if you want to be a guest on the Money Zone. We are accepting guests for the 2021 um, season. Um, don't forget to go there as well to join as a guest. And if you're trying to expand your business and you want to do promotions with us and become a partner, um, definitely look into that as well. So, guys. I'll see you all next week. Have an amazing night, guys. Bye. All caps, get notified and look out for what we have coming out in store and all of our guests coming on the show, guys. Tonight was amazing. I hope that, I hope that you guys learned a lot and I'll see you.